They were a bunch of nuts in those days. Surf bums, they called them. We've got a really great show tonight for everyone. Just real quickly, how many of you out there are members? Raise your hand if you're a member. Okay, so we've got a lot to be grateful for. This, uh, this, this COVID has been tough, but it's been, uh, it's been something that we've weathered and we're coming out the other end stronger and we feel really great about it. And we're really, really excited to see so many people showing up uh, for live again. Yeah. Everybody, everybody loves to have a little bit of, you know, face to face. So we love it. We're going to keep doing these big Wednesdays, uh, you know, at least one a month, maybe sometimes two. Uh, so keep your eyes open. You can always go to our website and find out what the events are that are going to come. We've got a great show tonight. Um, but before we start with it, I'd like to introduce one of the founding members of this museum and one of the rocks of it, our historian and uh, longtime wonderful supporter, Jane. This is a very, very exciting evening for us. Uh, we are celebrating 30 years. We, Tara found out, oh, we opened up our museum across from the pier in 1991 on September 28th. And we went, where did the time go? And I look around here and in this room, and those of you who have come, this room is full of history right here. I, I just get chills thinking, and if you don't know who somebody is, shake their hand and introduce yourself and have fun. You might meet the designer of the Duke Kahanamoku stamp, okay, wow. <gasps> who happened to be a surfer from Long Island, you know, but, but that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. He brought his love out here and he lives here now within striking distance and we love him dearly, but I'm not going to tell you who he is. You're going to find out who he is. Okay? He's very humble, very modest, extremely talented. We have board makers in here. We have champion surfers in this room. I'm not going to tell you who they are either. <laughs> You're going to have to find out. That was my job to learn all this backwards. And the way I learned it backwards was getting sucked into an idea that the world needed a surf museum. I asked Stuart Resor, and it was his idea. How many are there? He said, none. I couldn't believe it. I had a restaurant at that time and all these crazy surfers were coming and eating in the restaurant. I fell in love with them, in love with their stories. The stories will keep going on. The more young people we have here tonight, you guys have to carry this ball farther. You have to paddle the canoe the same way we have for all these years. We're, we're 30 years in Oceanside, so I want to thank all the past board members, the current board members, the city of Oceanside, the staff at this museum. Four part-time workers run this museum and work this museum. We have about a dozen extraordinary volunteers. They are, we couldn't live without them. We couldn't do what we do without them. And, and you'll meet some of them tonight, hopefully, because they're the ones who set up early, stay late, and clean up. They don't get any recognition, but they're always helping. And that's the essence of the heart and the passion of surfing, which we learned from Woody Ekstrom, Carl Herman, LJ Richards, lots of others is the giving part, the give back of surfing. And that's what's kept us afloat. We were shut down for COVID. Our membership came through, they renewed, they renewed at a higher level. We'd get a check coming down from the heavens that we never <laughs> asked for. It was like, oh my God. They do believe that this is good. And we can't do it without you. And we can't do it without you spreading the word. 35 years we've been doing this and we're still here. And I, I mean, I can't believe it half the time. And I have worshiped every single person that has stepped forward and helped us and, and has joined us and has helped us with this, grow this institution. I didn't mean to talk this long. <clears throat> so sorry. 
but you know it comes from the heart. And, and, and it was Stuart Resource's idea. Woody Ekstrom was the trigger. Woody, can you stand up a little bit? Girls, can you help him stand up a little bit? Woo! Okay. <laughs> We have the dock ball camera, thanks to Woody Ekstrom. We have at least three boards out on the floor, thanks to Woody Ekstrom. With Woody's help, he introduced us to the greats of surfing. We always had a foot in the door, because we didn't have any industry backing or support or, or any connections at the time we started. So it was a people to people thing. Woody's a big part of this movie, and I would like to say, I think you're really going to enjoy this movie. This is the second Doc Ball movie. The first one was made in the late 90s by our talented filmmaker guest, Carl Ackerman. And he came out with a Doc Ball movie. And then he learned so, you know, after you write the term paper, you learn so much more. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, I could have, you know, Jim Kempton, our president, he knows he's written several books. And the minute that book goes off to the publisher, you go, oh, my goodness. You know, I forgot ABC. But Carl decided, I met so many more people, so I am going to do another Doc Ball movie, which you get to see tonight for almost the first time anywhere. Tell your friends, if they weren't here tonight, they can also see it on PBS. PBS in the United States picked up this movie, wow. and we'll be showing it throughout the country for two years. Wow. So thank you, PBS. Okay. And, and Woody is a part of that story because he ended up with a dock ball camera, which you'll learn how he did that. And Greg Noel is a big part of the story because Greg and Doc were such good friends and neighbors up in the far northern part of the state for years and years and years. And I want to say that 35 years as a museum, we met Doc Ball. He thought what we were doing was fabulous. He was very, very encouraging of our efforts at a time when we had nothing, not even membership, not even t-shirts, nothing. But we had an idea and we had a concept. So you're going to learn about that and how, how you can't give up on your dreams. I mean, that's people talk all the time. Sounds good. We're doing it. Yeah. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thank you. Carl, come. Carl, where are you? Oh, there you are. Oh, my God. I'm filming you. Oh, you're in trouble now. Thank you. Thank you. Let me go ahead and grab this. This is what gets it to the camera, so we got good audio. One of the things I learned back in broadcasting from uh, Christian Communications Network, where I worked for a couple years when I first got into this, 1986. Um, I met Doc Ball in 1989. I decided to move up to Humboldt, and uh, I learned what cold water was all about. Uh, I'm a Sunset Cliff native. I grew up on Point Loma Avenue. We met on the beach. I was coming out of the water in 89, um, had my board, and he had a camera, and he was an old guy. I'm like, what's this old guy doing with this big fat lens on this camera? <laughs> and uh, several minutes later, I was at his house. And I tell you what, it wasn't long, uh, maybe 10 minutes. You know, he had this projector and he was playing film from the 1930s, you know. And I told him in ten, within 10 minutes, I was going to make up the movie on his life. And so um, I made two movies. And the first one was called Lens, uh, uh, Legendary Lensman, and uh, that released in 2000. That won the only Telly Award for a self-produced film in the year 2000. Uh, it played on uh, it, it played on PBS up in uh, up in Eureka, and um, that basically people in um, Oregon can see it and all the way down to Southern Humboldt. And so they ran that thing for over 10 years. I mean, I was up in um, Crescent City uh, shooting um, the interviews with Greg Knoll, 
And uh, there were guys that were giving me free crabs because they remember the movie. And um, it was cool. What happened was, um, I've been out in New Mexico. I, I work as a commercial producer for Hubbard Broadcasting. And that's NBC. So the, for the whole state, I do the commercials for the NBC affiliate. And so um, basically, I like the work. I can afford a house. I mar married a nice girl, all that. But I'm a surfer. What I figured I could do was make another version of this movie because I learned a lot and I knew Greg Knoll. I shot his daughter's wedding. I shot uh, his interview for Blazing Longboards for Chris Bystrom. And I shot all that surfing footage of Joel Tudor and all those guys. And um, that's something I got from Chris Bystrom was an intro to Greg. Greg hit a home run on this movie. Uh, and Greg was a friend and he, he, he went to bat for us. We felt like we wanted to do something for the surfing community. And so uh, you can turn on PBS. Uh, last week it was, um, it's actually running um, two Saturday nights in a row all in the Hawaiian Islands. Um, wherever you're at, you get it. There's like eight transmitters, you know, you know Maui, all the different islands. Um, and it's been in LA and San Francisco. It's, Pretty much all of them have, have accepted it. Last thing I'm going to say, it's going to take a minute, is we want to thank the California Surf Museum because every time I needed something, they did it for me. Um, I already had the interview I needed from Woody, but I needed that box <laughs> because I had, um, I had Doc talking about it, and we needed to show something when he was talking about how to operate it. So Woody had it or it was here, and so Jane picked up Woody with the box, met me down there, and we were able to uh, shoot what I needed. And then besides that, uh, she let me into the museum when I needed to get some fins. Um, she uh, delivered some prints, or she had a, a copy of California Surf Riders, and she scanned some stuff for me, or took it to. Um, and so basically, everybody's been real supportive of my mission here. This is uh, quite a showing. For, for a small little uh, museum, you guys have quite a following and you do really well. Um, so we're happy to be involved and you're, you are our home museum. So, so um, I drove out from New Mexico and I'm staying with my wife's family um, up east, a little northeast a little bit, uh, Corona. That's where her family lives. And so um, this is a big deal to come down here. Um, this, this morning and afternoon, I got to eat some burritos and, and watch my home break down at the cliffs. And um, you know, this is stuff that's uh, precious. So hopefully, you're going to be stoked on this. And hopefully, we'll see you um, soon. Thank so, you. I hope you like my film. All his shoots box was based on Tom Blake's wooden glass waterproof camera housing, invented just a couple of years before. Doc would go on to build two more, one a copy of his first one, and then a smaller one after World War II. There wasn't any patients, it was depression days and the patients were scarce. Well, I didn't have a patient, I'd get on my old car and get my board and go down and go surfing. Well, the original had a, just like an arrow almost. It was a real sharp tail, but then they made these slashes, then uh, they were shorter and they were lighter and easier to maneuver. 